Okay guys, here's uh, my guitar shop and here's the uh, cast uh, CNC project here that's now pretty much done. Got a few things left to do. But uh, I was playing last night and was uh, experimenting on some MDF. Uh, these are parts to the uh, harp guitar that I used to cut out on my old CNC machine. Oh, you can see the uh, new adapter collet that I got for uh, for my Porter cable here. This makes it real handy. You can push the button to lock uh, the uh, spindle and then just turn this and it drops the thing right out. Works pretty good. They've got uh, really nice high quality collets and it looks like it's going to work uh, pretty good. So over here to my side is uh, the simple controller and it's all wired up and uh, open it up here. Really the, uh, the, the thing you got to be careful on is just hooking up the switches right by the schematic uh, and uh, you know this is for the on off uh, for the uh, uh, 110 circuits and then the, the emergency off for uh, uh, the whole box or emergency off for just the uh, Gecko uh, 540 itself. So inside here, let's see, hang on. Okay, the field of view in this thing is pretty small. Okay, so those are the switches and then the switch wires uh, that just follow what's in the schematic. Uh, this uh, design that uh, picked up from the uh, forum has this master on off uh, for the box and that ha also has the effect of uh, locking the box when you close it and, and turn uh, the uh, switch on the outside to the on position it turns it on and locks the box so that's kind of cool and uh, once that's turned on you're uh, basically energizing uh, everything so then the uh, on off switch uh, up here can work. Th this has a normally closed and normally open uh, contact on it. It also has an optional LED in the middle. I ordered it but it never came in so I gotta track that down. Uh, it just allows the switch on the front side to be lighted. So I've got some wires kinda hanging to nowhere. Um, so when you do push the on off switch on it energizes this uh, contactor and uh, basically a contactor is a like a three position relay and uh, normally relays uh, use lower power to energize or close a higher power circuit and that's what this relay is doing here this is using 12 volts to energize a uh, 110 circuit which turns on and off uh, the router uh, but this contactor uh, once it's uh, energized with 110 power, uh, turns on the major 110 circuits. One of them is going over here to change 110 volt into 12 volt. And then another part of this is going uh, over to uh, this um, receptacle, basically. This is the receptacle that turns on a light that I have. I've got just some uh, LED lights underneath the uh, uh, X carriage there and it'll, as soon as I turn that on those lights go on. The nice thing about that is having lights on uh, when I go to leave at night uh, I can't leave this thing on overnight and you know warm up the uh, servos because uh, I'll see that the lights on I'll come over and turn it off. Okay, so it's one circuit to create 12 volt, another uh, circuit that, that feeds the uh, uh, on-off for the router, which actually comes down uh, here. Um, let's see, another 100 volt is the... Oh, yeah, another 100 volt is the... Well, I was just talking about that. That's the... Every time the the box is on that uh, 
switch is activated which activates my lights and then uh, then optionally the uh, the gecko can control uh, this relay and the relay will let power flow down here uh, to this bottom receptacle which is where the uh, routers plugged into actually I've, I uh, I haven't got my M4 and M3 commands set up yet so I just plugged the router in uh, up top and let's see so this uh, primary uh, power circuit has a fuse here just in case there's a short somewhere in, in that 110 circuit and uh, these little uh, I don't know what you call these things um, but they're just convenient to be able to hook things up and disconnect things without uh, really disorganizing everything and losing track of where everything is and so here's the power supply down here um, that's another 110 circuit that gets activated by the contactor it will uh, send power down here your power supply is different mine has 110 that comes in on this side and then on this side the uh, plus and minus uh, DC uh, 48 volts uh, comes out here so the key thing is to uh, just follow the schematic as carefully as possible um, and uh, it was amazing all these wires and I just was really really careful and the first time I plugged it in it just worked so uh, the fact that you got two guys watching the, the thing should uh, help you get there um, let's see one thing that's not in yet is my exhaust fan I just haven't been I'm not gonna be running this thing hard for a long time I think I'm gonna put the fan up here and then have a little flapper top on it and then over here on the side I'm gonna put um, a filter I got one of these uh, uh, filters that are used for vacuum cleaners and it's probably overkill but it, it, it's got a lip on it so I can just cut a rectangular hole in the side and then mount that sucker on there and that will be plenty of air and then the, of course the other fans that are important uh, hopefully is these uh, uh, little 12 volt fans that I've got just hooked up to the 12 volt power here and they are blowing air on the heat sink uh, for the gecko I think this is just three standard CPU heat sinks so uh, you could probably find those um, in electronics, a computer electronics catalog or something. Just measure it, and these are just three heat sinks that normally would go on a a uh, CPU processor in a in a uh, desktop computer. And then uh, another thing that I've got wired up is the uh, the lines to the limit switches. I've got. Um, X, Y, and Z on each input, and then I've got a uh, input for my probe. I uh, sometimes would like to be able to probe things, especially guitar parts or bridges or things. So I got this from, uh, gosh, what's that company's name? It's that company in Australia. Uh, pretty reasonably priced, um, cheaper than I get here in the States. And so I haven't played with it yet, but I just need to hook, hook that thing up and, and get it working. I've played with them before and tried to make my own and it just didn't didn't work out too well. Okay, so uh, on mine I've got limit switches here and then I need to put a limit switch uh, down here. Uh, I've got to drill some holes in aluminum that's why I haven't gotten to this. This one came with it for the uh, upper limit but I don't know why they didn't do the uh, the other limit and then on uh, on the carriage here I've got a limit switch here and a limit switch over here I decided to put all the limit switches on you know centrally located on the things that move rather than run the wires out to the ends of the axis and you see over here I've got another uh, limit switch here and what it does is it runs into little brackets and these brackets are adjustable you can slide them up and down um, the aluminum beam and you can see it's, it makes it pretty easy you can just go to one of the uh, hardware stores and get just a shelf bracket and mount it on there it works pretty good 
So you can see here's another limit switch here, or limit stop here, and then one here as, as well. Okay, so here's the old diagram, and uh, again, you know, here are the switches uh, above the uh, controller cutoff button, uh, the on-off switch for the controller, and the emergency cutoff for just the, uh, the gecko. Uh, the uh, power comes in from the outside here and terminates in this junction here and then feeds into the, uh, the disconnect uh, locking switch. And from there the power would go through this fuse and uh, up to the emergency controller uh, switch and then through that uh, to the on-off switch. So basically the power is going through here and then when you hit the on button it comes in and energizes this contactor and the contactor is uh, simply a, a, a triple pole relay so as soon as it gets energized the normally op open circuit goes closed and it energizes all the things in the box that run on 110 and again uh, the 12 volt power supply converts 110 to uh, 12 volts DC and then uh, the contractor uh, powers this unswitched uh, receptacle for lights or something that you want to come on as soon as the uh, the box is ready to go and then uh, it also powers uh, through this relay the relay is turned on and off by 12 volts and the 12 volts are controlled by the the gecko 540 but when that uh, relay is trapped then the 110 volts flow through it and then come down to this receptacle here at the bottom which is where you'll have your uh, router plugged into. So this one is turned on and off by the uh, gecko and this one's turned on and off by uh, the, made, the, the outside switch on off switch. Uh, another thing that gets powered also of course is the uh, power supply here. Uh, 48 DC is converted from 110 and then the output of that, the negative and positive uh, circuits uh, go up through this uh, screw down and uh, then can go to wherever it needs to go. Uh, one of the places is of course over here at the, uh, the gecko and I think that's all that I drive with that. Yeah, I think I just drive the gecko and then uh, all my fans are 12 volts so they come off this and that's about what the box is all about uh, the most complicated thing is the switches and getting hooked up in and out of this contactor uh, properly um, again I can't believe I hooked this thing up and it ran the first time I've, you know, late 50s and I've never had anything like that <laughs> happen before so uh, if you're careful, hopefully it'll do the same thing for you. Um, the uh, circuits I showed you on the actual box are um, shown here. Uh, the first four uh, pins on the gecko are inputs, and you can assign the touch probe to one and the different axis uh, to the other three. Um, on advice of somebody on the forum, they just suggested uh, doing something like that. And then uh, the e-stop signal comes in here uh, on pin 10, and then the 48 volts DC comes in on pin 11, and then the, uh, the gecko ground is here on pin 12. So all these switches uh, just go from the inputs um, through here, and these things are normally always closed, so anytime one of these circuits opens, it's going to drop a pin level on here which is going to indicate that something's happened with a switch. And I think that's about all I can think of. Again, just be very careful and, and uh, just wire it up as it's shown and you should do fine. Good luck with it.